I want to welcome you guys to the State of Nebraska Webmasters. This is our annual meeting because it's the first time we've met in 2012. So. And today we're going to talk about the web domain name standard, which we just recently heard about. And now is the 30-day comment period. So we have a chance to express our ideas and give them to the technical panel of the NITC to see if if they are willing to make any changes, if we can give enough um, body to what we want changed. So, we have a couple guest speakers today. So, I'm just going to give them, oh, I'm sorry, Rick Becker and Dan Ward, and, right? And Gavin. And Gavin. So, whichever one of you guys, and I don't even have to, um, what we have up on the board, which I'm pretty sure Shannon can see out there in Wi-Fi, wherever, land, not here. Anyway, can you scroll it down just a little bit? That's good, right there. Okay, so at the moment this is in a 30-day comment period. And the comments, up above it says the comments go to Rick. Correct. And would it be okay if I take some notes today and send it back out to the group? Would that work? And individual members can submit comments if they want. If you, as a webmaster's work group, want to submit one joint comment or recommendation, that's fine as well. So however you want to submit. Okay. What my plan is to take some minutes today and kind of capsulize it into what we would like to see the technical panel consider. And then we'll go off to the whole webmaster's meeting and if you could. Webmaster's mailing list. And if you guys have any other suggestions or if I have wrong, you can certainly make comments. Okay? So I kind of thought we would just kind of start at the top and we'll make our way down a little bit to see if we have comments as we go so it's not just hit and miss so I can take really good notes. So if we um, start at standard 1.1 official Nebraska government website is Nebraska.gov. We're not arguing about that, correct? Good to go. Okay, the next one, um, oh, oh, I'm not going to read that because it's long. One of the things I like is the fact that it does say you can either do Nebraska.gov or you can do NE.gov. Because here at the Library Commission we have both of those. And both of those are um, registered. The name is also registered as alternate domain result. I'd add one comment. We have heard some feedback already, uh, not formal, but just in conversations with folks, that the in the, the last sentence there where it begins resolving to the corresponding Nebraska.gov domain name may create problems for folks. In other words, that, that would require an any.gov website to uh, resolve to the full Nebraska.gov. Uh, I think that's certainly something worth discussing. Um, I, I don't know that Nebraska.gov and any.gov, both I think would be an argument that either of those should be fine without the resolving. So that's certainly something during the comment period you, you may want to consider recommending. Or I, I like because we have some that do, like here at the commission, we do any.gov and we do Nebraska.gov. Mm -hmm. So we have some of both, but I, I hadn't thought about that. So we could put in, in my minutes, I can say we would like you to take away the resolving and then just make it, okay, the domain NEGOV may be registered as an alternate domain. To the corresponding. To the so we're just taking out the word resolve. Right. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else have anything for that 1.2? Yes. Yeah. Can we clarify what a third level domain is? Good point. My understanding of domain naming, oh, I should let the technical, technical guys into this one, but the .gov is the first level, the Nebraska or NE is the second level, and then what, what precedes that is the third level domain. So revenue.nebraska.gov, revenue is the third level domain name, correct? Okay, so I'm going to clarify that. Here at the commission, the our website is nlc.nebraska.gov, which is a third level domain. Correct. Because you said that NE.gov is the second level. The .gov is the first level, .gov. and oh. then either NE or Nebraska, Nebraska is the is second, second level, level. Okay. and then the third and then, level would be the agencies for application specific domain. Okay, so as it says, should be registered at least a third level domain in Nebraska.gov. 
So, I'm sorry. You're going to have to give me just a touch more explanation. So my, so the thing is, is as long as, like at the commission, we have nlc.nebraska.gov registered. That's uh, we're good to go. That's good to go. And that is our main website. Yep. So we're fine. Did that clarify, Kurt? Yes. Is that good enough? Yes. Okay. We're going to go back down to 1.3. All registered Nebraska.gov and any .gov domain shall adhere to all federal regulations, requirements, and guidelines, which I didn't look for, and we don't have a link to go to the specific guidelines. Is there something there, specific? There is a link to the, if you scroll down under reference. Okay. And then they have a policy section. And a lot of that is, is requirements that we as the Office of the CIO, as registrars of those domains, have to follow. Some of them are would be apply to you. For example, there's no advertising on .gov domains, so you can't have Best Western advertisements, which Travel and Tourism, I believe, is a website that does use some advertising. So there's a legitimate reason for them not to be on the .gov domain. Uh, but we take those types of things into consideration. And what is the domain for the tourism that is has the advertisements on it? You said it's, it's, um, it's Nebraska.com right now. Okay. Okay. And that's Shannon who's online. Shannon Peterson. That's she represents tourism profession. Ah, got it. Okay. And Shannon knows how to talk to us in case she wants to input anything. <laughs> Okay, so is there anyone that has anything to say about that 1.3? Is, um, now this is just me, it's my comment. Do we need to say uh, requirements and guidelines as indicated in 3.1 below, or do we need to say, see, as you can see, I missed that. Did everybody else catch where the, the link was to the federal guidelines? So we don't need to say in reference to the report below. Okay. Okay. Then no changes to 1.3. Okay. 1.4. Domains other than Nebraska that governing it may be purchased but cannot serve content or be publicly promoted. I'm sure this is probably the one we're going to chat about. So. Um, and tourism is one of them that we need to bring up. Now, okay, let's go down to 1.5, which is just a second. Non-conforming domains in existence will be at the standard that will be exempt until December 31st, 2014. Is there any reference to that date as in it's just in the future? It's in the future. Yes. Okay. Okay, which is two years away. Now, it also corresponds to a gubernatorial change of office about that time. And one of the things is agencies have printed materials or letterhead or things like that that they would want to consume over the course of time. That's also a period where they'd be changing letterhead and stuff like that for a new governorship too. So it, well, that isn't why we, that date was selected, uh, but it, it happens to fall about that same time. Okay. So supposedly at the end of December 31st, 2014, tourism will have to change their URL. Well, before we go anything, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, okay. Just go ahead. all NITC standards and guidelines documents, there is a waiver policy in place that an agency, if for, if for business reasons or technical reasons you can't comply with any of the standards that the NITC has published, you can apply for a waiver uh, and have the requirement uh, waived by the technical panel of the NITC. So if there's a, a legitimate business necessity, and tourism is a good example, they have advertising on their website, uh, .gov requirements don't allow advertising, so they can't be a .gov and continue to do that business the way they're doing it. That would be, a, I, I can't speak for the technical panel, but I would, I would think they would view that favorably uh, in, in terms of issuing a waiver. Okay. And there's nobody from Game of Parks, is there? Okay. So, because um, the Game and Parks one is an outside 
Isn't it dot org? They, there's goes to uh, and it just up. forwards to it, so Correct. it really doesn't have any content. Right. Now, they, right? they, they publish uh, outdoornebraska.org, I believe it is. Okay. And it, if you go to that, it, it rolls over to Nebraska.gov.org. Okay. Okay. So that would be okay with 1.4, no matter when. So as long as you're forwarding, then you don't have to have a waiver. Am I understanding that correctly? The publicly promoted there on on. on Oh, so that okay. would change it's come December 31st, 2013, <laughs> so, unless they saw it and got away. So, for example, we promote NebraskaCenterJapan.com because this is a this is our Japan office, Nebraska office in Japan, the Economic Development Office. Um, not sure what a .gov would look like after they've seen a .com and switching it. So that 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 is one concern that we would have, and, and I don't know if that would fall under anything. For a waiver, but that, I mean that's just one thing that we would look at, you know, for considering that and all the costs that have been involved in developing that and promoting it. And promoting it, and we promote a lot of sites, and that's one of them. That, and we're also opening currently at Nebraska Center of China, so things mm -hmm. like that. Right? And generally, economic development has a large number of .dot coms and yes, we do. other <laughs> .dot org and several others. And quite a bit of advertising that goes on with those. A lot of long-term advertising. So yeah. I, I think the waiver process is um, <clears throat> really the only answer we needed to sort of submit that stuff on a case by case. Our um, audience. Now we have to talk a little louder because sure. I'm older. Yeah. <laughs> and our audience, like tourism, isn't just Nebraska-based. We're talking businesses and people nationally and internationally. So it's not just a Nebraska-focused site. I mean. Almost, almost everything we promote, I mean, there's some things that go to Nebraska communities and things like that, but almost everything else that we promote goes to businesses outside of the state and the country. So, And one of the big problems that we have is um, that we also have sites that are a private-public partnership. So we have businesses that partner with us to make a site for promotions or for the ongoing programs that we have. That's too it's just something we're going to have to look at each each case up, I guess. Are you telling me you're on the um, technical panel? I'm not no. on okay. the technical panel. Be happy to be, but <laughs> probably don't want me. How do we apply for a waiver? Yell really loud. <laughs> it's uh, I believe it's one dash one zero three in the state the NITC website standards and guidelines. The same place where this document is. If you click on standards home, okay. standards and guidelines. Yeah, one dash one zero three is the waiver policy. It tells you how you submit the waiver request, what information we need from you. The technical panel reviews those. They meet monthly, all, well, almost monthly. Uh, and they'll take it up as soon, as soon as you submit it. They'll take it up at their next meeting. So it's not a drug out process. Um, I think you provided that link in that email screen mm -hmm. last week, right? Yeah. And when you would be notified of when your waiver is up, so you can come sure. talk to the yep, technical exactly. panel and yeah. you know bring all your gang and more than Okay. And we want to submit that. Prior to, I mean, we want to and submit that as soon yeah. as possible so we make sure we're approved or not. Approved. Yeah, you don't have to wait until the okay. end of that grandfather. No, I know. Wait until the last day. As soon as it's adopted, if you want to start putting together your request, to, so, we'd certainly process it. Okay. After adopted, then they can we can start submitting waivers. <clears throat> And just to be clear, that, you know, it is something that they review, they take very seriously you know, on, on standards and guidelines, but if there's a legitimate business reason or technical reason, they're, they're generally favorable uh, to those types of requests. But it just can't be because we want it, or we want, that's the way we've always done it. Um, there's probably some other agencies that may not be here today that would have some legitimate reason to have an outside address. Does um, uh, the Historical Society has an outside address, don't they? Okay, so they would be... 
that would be a way. But we talked about um, tourism. We talked about outdoor Nebraska. Is there anybody else here that specifically has some outdoor, outdoor. some outside <laughs> addresses that are not Nebraska.gov or any.gov? Yeah, agriculture, we have two of them. We have a .com and we have a .org. And they're more for promotion part of our department. And I'm sure we'll probably apply for waivers on both of them. Okay. I know the one was just renewed back in April for three years. And I think the other one we might have one or two years left on the renewal of that name. So. And that's either that like GoDaddy or I can't remember any of the other domain, re domain name, domain registries that you have a registry. Yeah, Nebraska.gov did one of them for us and Snitley Car did the other one, so for renewals. I had a question uh, related to complying. If sorry, I'm talking loud for the recording. Um, as we go into the process of coming over to .gov, what does that process look like of competing for the name that we would get as a third level? As in, you know, a lot of people might want local .nebraska .gov or whatever it might be, advantage .nebraska .gov. Who is it that um, does that? <laughs> It's never come up. Okay. Um, nobody's ever asked for the same name that another person has asked for. Uh, if you're having any questions about that, you can call me and say, is this name available? If it is, can you reserve it for me? We have to cover. And, and I'm really surprised because we're at the commission is NLC, and some people say, <laughs> does that mean Nebraska Liquor Commission? Right. No. Lot. And then just the other day, somebody else came up with a different NLC abbreviation that I'd never heard of. But, There's know. a lot of them that are really close, but right? nobody's ever actually asked for the same. Which is, which is great. Yeah. Um, is there, I mean, is there any reason we would need to put into here where you ask or you just email the help desk at OCIO? And That's the best way because that way it won't get lost. While you're asking for or considering domain names, there's one thing you might want to take into account. Uh, like Department of Health and Human Services has a lot of theirs as a fifth level domain of like server.dhhs.nebraska. If you put them in, they have a DHHS subdomain that's part of uh, subdomain of Nebraska. If you put all your names in the subdomain, we can allocate that subdomain to your organization. You can maintain it yourself. You can do add changes and deletes. But if it's in the main Nebraska.gov section, then we can't delegate that to you because you'd be able to change all the other ones for everybody else. Does that make any sense? And is that something that you would definitely do? Something that precedes your agency acronym, agency name, whatever it is. If you've only got five or ten entries, it's not a big deal. But if you're a larger agency and you have a staff of people that, some larger agencies, we have five people that have access to the DNS system in their organization. They do all their own changes, adds, changes, deletes. They don't have to wait for us. They can do it whenever they want. So. <clears throat> In the Health and Human Services, the, and I always get it wrong, because here at the Commission we have NebraskaAccess.ne.gov, but at Health and Human Service they have Access Nebraska. And is it .ne.gov? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so. Some of them are in the main area just for naming convenience or, but um, some of them, some of the more obscure ones, they have several of those are in, a, in their own subdomain and they just manage all that. The State Patrol does all theirs. And, Corrections does all theirs. Okay. okay. So if we get a waiver, the waiver is there is no date on the waiver. Is uh, that that's, correct? They can either grant the waiver, uh -huh. uh, they can reject it, or they can make it conditional. Uh, a lot of times they do put a condition on it, uh, they'll put an end date to the waiver. And then you can either reapply for the waiver uh, or in 
it'd be reconsidered. Uh, they haven't done that on, on the summer reports. So. More questions, more discussion, more, okay, because there really isn't anything, can you scroll down just a little bit, please? Yeah, I've got a question. Okay, so on, back on 1.2, are you going to post something out there as an alternative revision to that last sentence? Uh, I, no, I don't. I'm At this point, it's open for comments. Uh, anybody can submit comments on that. I'm just saying that that's a, a question or a, a change that I'm going to suggest or okay. discuss internally and then probably suggest that either the tech panel, state government council, or both. Uh, but. Okay. And then they, they look it over and then they'll re... Do we the, go to another at the, end of the at the end of the comment period, uh, again, they can either recommend approval as directed, regardless of what comments they receive. They can make changes to the document, based, usually based on the comments or, or their own initiative. At that point, uh, if they determine that it was a substantial change to the document, they'll repost it for 30 days. If they believe it's consistently responding to requests and, and wouldn't impact negatively others, then they'll go ahead and just recommend approval with that change. So in other words, this resolve, uh, I don't know that there would be anybody who would be against that change. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. So uh, they may make that change and just recommend approval of the document with that change. Are you just going to take our emails going back and forth, or do you want me to have Glenn do something with the comment? I, I can talk to you, Doctor. Um, so in taking out, so at this point in time, what we have talked about is only taking out the word resolving. Did I miss? And how does that, how does that make life easier? Uh, By if you leave resolving in, in the, the any, the way it's written now, if you had an any.gov domain, you could promote it, publish it, whatever. But when somebody typed that into the the type that URL in, it would be forced. It, you under the standard, it would have to go to the Nebraska.gov domain. Automa it could be automatically in the background, but that that word resolving says it, it must it would have to go to the corresponding Nebraska.gov. Take resolving out, you can promote either or. or they just want to be the any.gov would be the alternate. And if you take out the resolving too, does that mean that all of my web links on every page of my site won't break? Because that, we just we just went to ASP.net a couple of years ago, and our web stats went down by like three hundred yeah, four thousand for two years before it recovered. I, I'd love these guys respond okay. to the, the technical, but it, my understanding is to the the auto forward you do at the server level, and and it wouldn't break the links. Okay, but correct me if I'm wrong. The question whether your links are absolute or relative. So you'd want to, you'd want to have relative lengths, of course, so you can yeah. move more freely. Okay. But it breaks all our SSL applications with the any dot gov. Uh, and that's and that's part of the consideration. That's why the yeah. resolving I came mean, up. this is yep. major for yep. not just you know the core, but for anybody with SSL enabled application, it's major if you're under the any dot gov namespace. Right. Yeah. It's a huge issue. And it's, it's, it's so there's. The one side for most of you people is you've got a website where you do content. But if you have application internet application systems already under .ne.gov, and we have several of those, then the impact becomes somewhat more major than, than just a standard website. So I know you folks are talking about in, in, in exceptions for the first level, but if any of you have, got app, have bought systems, web-based systems, and got them under that domain or custom develop those systems, you know, you've got another major impact. So yeah, we, rec we recognize that, and that's why we put the any.gov in there. Right. right. The way this was envisioned is it's it's a mess and it's getting worse. And well, is, it, is the mess of the guy, is that the first level or the really, is that what you're more sorry? concerned? Is the concern more at that first level? The, the dot gov versus all the other dot coms and dot orgs, not really <coughs> well, whether it's in a debate between any and Nebraska at the second level. That, it, it, there's several parts to it. The dot gov, people are less likely to apt, apt to mess with a dot gov site than they are with the dot com or dot org. There's more serious consequences. Um, so that's a built-in level of security. It's not much, but it's something. 
what the, there's several factors driving this. One of the factors is where IPv6 is approaching us. And IP addresses are going to go away and DNS is going to become more important than it was with IPv4. Everything is going to be DNS, including uh, SSL is probably going to go away in favor of uh, a DKIM sort of system. Um, and that will be based on DNS. Um, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here, but he's got he's got the reason the, the rationale is. No, I, I I think you it's the the, the dot gov is the, the primary change. That's why taking the word resolving out of that solves the problem you guys were would have. I think any dot gov is legitimate. Um, so well, in, in the near future, the, the feds own the dot gov namespace. They want all government organizations under that namespace because they're scanning everything. For terrorists, uh, you know, hacking and all that stuff going on, so they they own that namespace. And uh, again, within a couple of years, it's very possible the internet will not be the internet as we know it today. It's going to be uh, the United States is it's going to be national. You know, they're going to start to break that up, and the .gov namespace, the feds own, and they can scan everything going through that that namespace. Did not address that in this document. Okay. <laughs> And the way this was envisioned is we're not going to fix this overnight. It's going to take 10 years. Um, but going forward, let's use Nebraska.gov. Sure. And then through the process of attrition, we'll get rid of the rest of it. But it's, it's going to take a long time. So after 2014, then the NE.gov, will it still work if somebody types in ncbdi.ne.gov? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have a registry. <clears throat> If, if we take the resolve. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Which, yeah. kinda, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it sounds pretty like it might. So I'm going to switch to a different topic now, same kind of thing. But, um, you know, when I, we first started our state page, it was www.state.nlc.ne.us. So my question is, is that still going to forward to nlc.nebraska.gov? Because that's gone. not <laughs> mentioned up here at all. <laughs> is that answer no? Uh, State.ne.us, or ne.us, actually the U.S. domain is uh, owned by, it's not a federal domain, it is a commercial domain owned by Oh, I can't think of the name of them right now. It's one of the more infamous registers, registrars. Uh, it wasn't addressed in this, but it is, it is in a way because state entities at US is not in the rest of the top So that's so I think correct. she's talking about she's it talking is. about forwards and because we have I mean we are the library is. commission and we have URLs all over catalogs across the United States that say well, if you start using Nebraska.gov now, in 10 years, they won't no. say that anymore. No, they won't, because these are Nebraska documents that go back to when we first started doing Nebraska documents. So we won't change those URLs in our catalogs. Okie dokie. So you guys are not addressing that. And and the other thing is, so if anybody typed in state.ne.us, they wouldn't get to the state page either. www.state.ne.us is no, what the state page originally was. Right. Frankly, I had not. It does redirect to the rest of the country. It does now, but right. it will no, not do yeah. it in the future. And again, this isn't going to happen in two years. It, it, it's yeah. not going to happen in two years. Well, I understand. But I'm just saying. Trying, just trying to get people going in the right, everybody kind of going in the same direction here. The, the ownership of state.nu.us, <coughs> you guys maintain that as well? So if somebody tomorrow wanted to, then nobody's going to. But if somebody tomorrow wanted to add, you would, you guys have control over that domain. So I've got about ten of those. Right. So so we can, we we can keep that alive as a legacy for as long as, long as it's necessary. As long as we I don't control. See it going so that's not, not, not a problem. problem. Stop using it. Well, we have <laughs> stopped using. We moved to nlc.nebraska.gov for all of our new 
yeah. stuff. But there are things that are in the catalog that are going to be there forever because there's no reason to change a 19, uh, 1842 entry. Um, so, until the feds mandate that all government organizations in the United States have to be under the .gov name well, state, and, and when nationalized. The, when the government, the feds say that, yeah. and I suppose I don't have as much, I can't argue as much as I can here at the state level, our <laughs> requests that. Um, Going forward, let's just don't use state that in Well, and I understand that. <laughs> it's not going away. It's not going away. We, we, we have that. So answer. I guess my question would be, is that something that could be added to this? Sure, um, it should probably be. Yeah, yeah it could state that in that U.S. could be a legacy that's... That, uh, then that's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah that could okay. certainly be a comment from the web resource. Who would like that? I was hoping it would just go away. I'm sorry, <laughs> but my boss specifically said to ask about this, even though he's not that here. Works. Well, to the library catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but okay. Okay, I'm done with my questions. Anybody else? Yes. Um, in viewing the NITC charter, I'm seeing guidelines, but I'm not seeing force and I'm not seeing penalty. I want to hear about that. Uh, the enforcement of NITC standards and guidelines is there's basically two elements. One, IT purchases in state uh, state government have to come through the office of the CIO. One of the reviews, our team uh, who reviews purchase requests is do they comply with standards? Uh, the second is uh, the state budget process. The budget office is well aware of the standards and guidelines that we propose. Uh, and they, when they review projects, budget requests, that's one of the issues that they raise as well. But we don't have any uh, handcuffs or... So that, is, that, that covers all of the guidelines. Correct? All the standards, standards guidelines. Guidelines, right, that's Whether that's the one that says you need to have state of risk at the top and you need to have a link back to the state web page at the bottom and but and a lot of times it's just communication and awareness. Didn't you know the, the border, you know, an agency may not even know that's oh, policy I understand. exists. And I understand. so it's just a by the way you need that on your website, you need to put it on your website, sort of that's okay. the way it usually works. So my question would be when this becomes okay, and the only reason I knew about this to begin with. Well, yes, every agency has a person that is, I wouldn't necessarily say on the state government council, invited to the state government Anyone council. Anyone can state government. No, what I mean is so that they officially get information about it ahead of time. It isn't a, uh, so there's one person from every state agency. There's 24 members. Um, there's probably eight, around 18 agencies that are represented. Okay, so not every state agency no. has a... Member. Yes, the emails that talk about what the um, what the government council is going to be doing, proposing that kind of thing. Yeah. Fortunately, here at the library commission, we have someone who is. We have two people that are on it that get the emails, yeah. so we kind of know about things ahead of time. But for the agencies who don't know about things ahead of time, and they aren't there to go plead their case or stick their waiver in or whatever, and two years down the road, all of a sudden they're. Oh, and I know their URL would not just go away out of you know. I'm sure there'll be not. some some reach out, outreach to agencies that are not in compliance, the, the, their main web page resolves to a .org or something like that. It, okay. it, so I'm sure, I'm sure that'll occur. Okay. Now, we don't know about, I don't know about the, you know, if, you have, if an agency DED comes to mind, has multiples of uh, .coms out there, .business, that I wouldn't know about, they have to bring them, bring, bring them forward for a waiver or else they can handle it. Has this discussion been taken to the nine code agency meeting? Yeah. No. Will it go? I don't. I don't participate in the nine code agency meeting. Okay. So anybody who's on that group can, I'm sure, bring it up. You guys have anybody? Okay. Um, okay. Now this may be inappropriate question. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> is it feasible? Okay, and I would have to say that I know that every agency has someone, 
either reading, attending, whatever, listening, Shannon, um, for what goes on in the webmaster's email list. Okay, but is it possible to send um, notices of the? See, I'm trying to decide the state government council, the technical, the, the technical panel, because not everything they talk about has to do with web pages. Absolutely. It's just occasionally something comes up that does have to do with web pages. Okay. So never mind. We'll just cancel that whole line. All right. How about an RSS feed? Do you guys do anything yeah. like that there? I post some media notices for Tech Panel okay. State Government Council and the needs to And that's just as they're coming up, yeah. right? It's not a full time thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just when they're when the dates the date's set for a meeting or yeah. if a date at the meeting gets canceled, it gets posted yeah. RSS. I signed up for that one. I didn't know if there are any other yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> like no other computer out in this room. Um, so the RSS feed would be on your the NITC homepage. On the homepage. On the homepage. Yeah. Okay. And I'm trying to think. The hard finds. I'm trying. Well, I know. Okay. You I know. paste this URL into just about any reader. You right. should find it on. But shouldn't it have a little RSS thing? Don't have to. <laughs> no, I mean I. I know where it is linked if you go to the standards and guidelines, and then if you click on draft documents for comment at the top. That there's a uh, link yeah. to it right there. But pasting it in a piece of Nebraska document right. you should find it right. in any reader. If they only have one. There's only if one thing. There's only one choice. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I will make up some minutes and send it out. And I'll also advertise this when this uh, broadcast, when it's completed, which I'm sure will be really quick. For other people to listen to, if you take it home, what, listen to it with your family, you know, whatever. So, okay, thank you guys for coming. Thanks. Thanks.